Well, there's a slide that I can see and it's talking about victory night next week. <laughs> I'll just tell you about it. So you guys, next week, Victory Night, uh, I know all of your discussion group leaders have talked to you about it, talked about it a little last week, but in particular for you guys, either you're new or you've not been before, I really encourage you to come. I didn't want to come my first year in BSF, but then I found out it was just one of the best nights of the year. And In short, this is a way to give praise to God. And we'll generally give you about a two-minute uh, time limit, come up here, say your name, say your group leader, and, and, uh, and I know uh, I want to sing the praises of your group leaders, but this is really praising God. So uh, you know, just say their name, your name, and how God has, some, uh, the victory, how he has worked in your life, through your life, around you, through this study, whatever it may be, and I encourage you to, to come at 630 we're going to have, uh, if you bought a ticket for a, a sandwich, you can do that. But just know it doesn't matter if you've got a ticket or food or you're bringing food, whatever. Uh, everyone's welcome. And then we'll start about 7.15. And then next year, uh, we start the first Monday after Labor Day. Same thing every year, all year, uh, all, each year. So, ah, he knows. I need a cord, don't I? All right. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin Chen. I think it'll be popping up here. There we go. Oh, <laughs> my boy. There we go. Okay. Slide I told you about. Thank you, Kevin. There are many parts to the body. Everybody has a function. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys, last lesson, last discussion group, last lecture for this year. You know, we started off the year, we were talking about, uh, just kind of described this book of Romans as a mountain that we would climb together. And we've done it, and we're here, and we're at the top, and it has been a spectacular uh, adventure together. Um, it's been awesome. I appreciate you guys very much. You know, Paul, uh, he's going to send us off here, and, and this is one of those at first blush, you, you know, you open up just chapter 16, and you, you know, there's all these names, and you may just kind of skim over it and say, okay, well, I guess he was done, and, you know, this is, you know, and, and uh, but then we stop, you know, and you say, why did Paul include all of these people here? Why, you know, he's been doing all this teaching, and now he's listening to all these people. And we think about, well, why? And then we start thinking about Scripture itself. Paul has taught uh, how valuable Scripture is. We read in 2 Timothy, All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. That's all Scripture. We know that Paul himself was following God's uh, promptings, his inspiration, and in everything that he wrote this entire year and we know that includes, and God had a purpose for every word that's in the Bible, and that includes every word that's in this chapter 16. So we say, all right, it may be like the credits to the movie, but we're going to hang in and we're going to see what, it, you know, what is it that, that Paul is wanting to give us. And we, you know, and, and really, the, the more at least that we study, and I'm praying about and studying for this evening, it seems to me that Paul comes back to where he started, where he spent this whole year, and that is the gospel. That's the big idea. And then he, you know, he started way back when, chapter 1, verse 16, the theme verse for Romans. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. You know, the power of God through the gospel that saves and transforms believers. We spent a bunch of time at the beginning of the year, starting in the book, about being saved. That is, that we all need God's righteousness, that none of, all of us fall short. And then that Christ would pay the price himself in the flesh to pay for our sins and then offer us God's righteousness as a gift. You know, and from that, that we would be, at that moment, that we would accept Christ's mercy, his grace, and be adopted into God's family. That we would, Paul taught us this year, that we would have peace with God through Christ. And that power that we're saved. 
then also that how, and then we, we, we learned a whole bunch more this year, all of us, once we've accepted Christ, you know, that we embark on this adventure of, uh, of learning to be more like Christ. We call it sanctification. This lifelong process. And that God really wants to fill us up. It's not just about, okay, when your life ends, it starts then. He's all about, and we see this week, about people and relationships in this life, here on this earth. You know, he said in chapter 15, verse 13, this, this, this verse, may the, this, how it affects us right now in this life. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what he's wanting and given us to live in this life and that power. You know, and so I've got to aim for this week that we just we know how personal and how powerful God's love is in each believer. And I divide it up, well, we're, and we're finishing off with the community of God. And we really see this as Paul's talking about this community of believers. And then the three divisions this week that, that I've divided up into three, one through 16, personal greetings, last lesson, and they're in the middle, and the final doxology. So here we are in this, in this first 16 verses, and, and, and Paul's listing all these people, and, and uh, the notes are really good about these people, and there's, there are a lot of commentaries that say a whole lot, but just in brief. You've got Phoebe, starting right there at the beginning, a woman deacon, which I know you guys talked about in your class. This would have been counterculture in the day, even can be today. Uh, and that's who he starts with. You've got Priscilla and Aquila, this husband and wife, and they're just everywhere with Paul and supporting the ministry. You've got uh, Epinetus, the first convert to Christ in Asia. Can imagine how encouraging it was when the first Gentile that Paul's sharing the gospel and they believe. You know, imagine, you know, if you've ever been a part of helping to lead someone to Christ, how profound that is in your life and how it was uh, to Paul. Then you've got Mary, this, un, we don't know who this is, but she's a worker. And you think about all of the workers for Christ there are. Even, even right here in Bible Study Fellowship, we've got the, the admin team that makes things. Somebody come in here and show me I need to plug in the computer, right? <laughs> you know, all of those people that are part of the body. And then this uh, Andro, Nicus, and Junia, they were in prison with Paul. They are outstanding among the apostles. What a description. Uh, Ampliatus, a common slave name. So we've got slaves in here. We've got Urban, Urbanus, Urban, a city dweller. And then you've got this, is it Stachus, an ear of corn, is a city boy, a country boy. You've got Apelles, whose fidelity to Christ has stood the test. That's the one, you know, we had a question, which one interested you? If your, your fidelity to Christ stood the test back in that day and that kind of persecution, I, I can only imagine what he did. And, and, you know, none of us really have our faith tested like that. But it's inspiring. And so, you know, another reason Paul would put these people's name in here to give us inspiration. These households, they said, and we, and we don't even know if the people are still alive, but they're entire households. And then these, uh, the women that are commended for their work. And then don't forget Rufus. It, the Rufus is just a fun name to say, right? Rufus and his mom, who was like a mother to me too, you know? All of these people, and then the, the, a couple other groups where there's a house church. All right, so you go through the list, and you say, why did Paul include all these people? You know, and you can see a lot of good reasons. You know, but to start with relationships. We can see that Paul invested in relationships. He cared about people. And he was doing what the Great Commission is, making disciples. He didn't, he didn't just spread the gospel and maybe, you know, people accepted Christ and they said, okay, good luck, and take off. You know, he's still investing them over and over, day after day, all of these people modeling for us what disciple making looks like. And he just taught us last chapter, each of us should please our neighbors for their good to build them up. You know, so he's doing what he's teaching us. And then you look again, of course, in the lesson you see the diversity of this body of believers. You got men and women, free people, slaves, and rich, poor, city, country folks. It's all inclusive. So of course, the gospel is for everyone. 
And thank God it is. And that's both personal to us and encouraging. And then the, the church. So, uh, you know, Paul used the word church here, and it's the first time he's used the word church in the book of Romans, and he uses it five times in this chapter. I didn't realize this. And, you know, and so I ask you, what comes to your mind when you think of the word church? You know, do you think of a place? You know, do you think of an event like church is Sunday? And so reading about this, Paul that uses the Greek word ecclesia, which happens is also used 109 times in the New Testament, different from the Old Testament. And it means a gathering or a community. So Paul is describing church to mean a community of believers. And the way he's teaching and showing us, you, know, you could say it's a community of unity, unity in Christ. And then also, listing out all these people, you get to see the fruit of the gospel. And you get to see this community of transformed lives. All these people from different walks of life and the gospel has transformed every one of their lives. They were doing something different before they encountered Jesus Christ in the gospel. And we talked about this year about how salvation is not just about me. Not just the relief, okay, I'm, I'm going to, uh, you know, when I die, I'm going to get to go to heaven. And we said, no, 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 God has so much more planned for us. When we reached up and he, Christ pulled us up, I'm putting you on a team. We talked about this year about having a new identity in Christ, a new jersey. And that we're on this championship team and that God, you know, we just had the, the draft, so it's fresh on my mind. That God drafts each of you, each of us with a job, a position in mind. And we all have our own role to play on this championship team that God's continually putting together. And as with any team, team unity is key. And that's what Paul has been teaching us. And again, now he's showing us. It's our job to build up the team. Uh, and we do that by each of us using the gifts and talents that God has given us, the unique talents. And then we never forget that we didn't earn our spot on the roster. As the gospel teaches us, God gave us this spot out of his grace and mercy. And you know, you look here, and we said this too, last thing, is, is just even here in, in Bible study fellowship. And we come from all different walks of life, but we are bonded together in Christ. We are part of the same family. And this is really cool. As Paul is, is talking about these individuals that he, that he knows and he's calling them out that while the gospel is for everyone and everyone who receives it through belief, through faith, that Jesus knows each and every one of you personally. It's a personal relationship. And the principle is that the gospel transforms all who believe and gifts us into this one family. You know, Jesus loved you so much, he put you into his family, and he gave you brothers and sisters as a gift to help you grow. And that's called the church, as he's talking about here. And Jesus gave us the church family as a gift to satisfy each of our cravings for authentic, deep relationship. And so the church should, <coughs> excuse me, should represent God's tangible expression of love and grace to a divided, desperate world out there. And he strategically places believers in the local church. And for that reason, really, all Christians, all Christians, we should fellowship with, we should be a part of, we should support the local church. And you can ask yourself, how are you helping to make the local church a haven of grace for the downtrodden, for people who need grace? How does your love for others in your church make those outside your church hungry to have what's going on inside of your church? You know, what can I do this week to show this Christian love to others? We had a question about that. Who can you encourage this week? It was in the lesson. It was a great practical question, not just theoretical. All right, let's go on to the second division. Well, the last lesson, because, you know, Paul loves the church. He loves us that he knows he's going to be reading it, and he wants to get one last teaching in before he's done with this letter. Um, and so he's got this warning, watch out for those that cause divisions, and then he confirms that God wins. 
Right, so he's, he's, he's talking about, you know, really, and we see from this, and one of the questions is, what do you learn from this? And, the, and we learn, as, as Paul's teaching, watch about these, these people that are they're, uh, divisive in the way that they teach. And it really, it shows us that, every, what does it tell you about every Christian ministry? And that is that every Christian ministry is subject to attack by the enemy. And the enemy can work and can and will work through people. And it's, it says, how are, how are these people recognizable? Well, Paul tells us they're teaching contrary to what we have learned. If it's contrary to what's in the Bible, red flags should go off. And they're not serving our Lord Christ, but it says their own appetites. They're serving themselves. And now that's interesting, too. They said, what do you, what, and one of the questions, what do you do about, with these people? It says, keep away from them, right? And that's, and that's not, and that's not, you don't back up from Jesus went out and he sought out sinners to save, like us, sinners to save, right? and that's not what he's talking about. Um, but then you move on, and this, and this, we don't want to forget. In the with this warning, Paul gives this great encouragement in verse 19. You know, he says, "Everyone has heard about your obedience." Imagine that if this, even this group of believers here, the men's Arlington BSF, that we would be known for our obedience to God. Now that's, a, that's a something we're striving for right there. And then he says, so I rejoice because of you. The, the Apostle Paul would rejoice because of, why would, we, why would we be rejoiced? Because of obedience. That that's a big goal we've talked about. And then he said this, uh, wise about what is good and innocent about what is evil. And we had a couple of questions in this in the lesson. Wise about what is good, of course, is spending time in the Word. Spend time with God in prayer. Spend time with fellow believers. Spend time in your local church. That's wise. And innocent about what is evil. Well, that, of course, is to stay away from those people, those places, those situations where you know if I go there, I'm going to slip. It's a good chance. So just don't go there. Just don't do it. And then verse 20, for all of the bad in the world, for all that, that, that the enemy has put in the world, when Paul finishes here, this verse 20 of the section, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. You know, God wins, and there will be justice, and God dispenses the justice. And so we've talked about it's so cool this year. We don't have to worry about, you know, that, that's, that's not right. That guy, you know, God will take care of it. And isn't it interesting, he will crush Satan, he says, under whose feet? Your feet, our feet. Now that's encouraging. And now God's peace really is what we get from this, right? And it's important on God's peace. God does not give us peace by taking away our painful circumstances. You know, just the opposite. God is our peace in the midst of painful circumstances. And He is our peace because we know we can bank on His Word that He, that he wins in the end. We're on the winning team. And the principle here is that God gives believers peace discernment and encouragement you know on this divisiveness in the church I thought it's important for us to remember about ourselves you know are we a divisive divisive or dividing force in the church do we complain about what goes on at church you know are we one of these people that say you know what they ought to do you know they need to do that they need to do that when we're talking about our own church we need to be people that say, we will do this. We are going to do this, right? To support the church. Uh, and are we obedient? And just uh, before we leave this section, read one more time that verse 19. Everybody, everyone has heard about your obedience. Let that be us. Let that be us. All right. And here we are. Final division, final chapter, final lesson, this final doxology. Uh, first, there in verses 21, 2, and 3, of course, Paul, you know, the people that are with him, and I heard uh, in one of the classes talking about this was his team, his ministry team. You know, you've got uh, Timothy, his, his co-workers, and these other co-workers, Tertius, you know, who wrote the letter. He's a scrivener. Even Paul said, hey, Tertius, why don't you, you know, tell him, say hello. Wouldn't you like to say hello? And he does. And then he got, uh, somebody said that he's got his hospitality team. He's got Gaius, who's hospitality, and then this Erastus is the city's director of public works. You know, and once again, we get to see there's, there's many different parts 
to the body of believers and everybody has their part. And again, it's about relationships. Relationships are key. You know, relation, personal relationships are really God's tool through which he does most of his work here on the earth. And that's us together. And he's showing us what it's like, what he's been teaching us. And, these, and now we get to see these godly relationships that we get to share, for example, here. You know, they enlarge our thoughts about God. We get to see so much more as we have these godly relationships with the other, each other. And then Paul gives his final encouraging words, directing our thoughts to God. And always as he does back to the core of this entire letter, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, by the way, this verse 24, you know, most of our, uh, our versions, it's not in there, but there's a footnote, and it says it anyway. It says, well, some manuscripts include this sentence, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. That's worth repeating, too. May the grace of the Lord Jesus be with all of you. And then last, this doxology, and a doxology is a call to worship. And if there's ever a reason, to, a call to worship, it's right here. And that we, everybody got to try to put this into their own words, which is cool. And then about the mystery, something hidden now revealed. And you guys talked about that. And you think about the gospel's got so much mystery wrapped up in it. You know, the inclusion of the Gentiles and the saved. We've talked about this here, about how God had chosen for centuries before. He had picked out the Jewish nation. He had promised them. He had worked with them. He had nothing to do with the Gentiles. And it turns around... And here we are, Gentiles, being uh, in, included in the body of believers. And then the mystery of the indwelling in the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ himself living inside us. That's a mystery. Um, and then God's plan of salvation and all, grace. It, it, one of the leaders Saturday morning put it real simply. There's no practical explanation for God's grace, is there? You know, the fact that God would give me grace still is a mystery to me. It'll always be a mystery to me. The principle is that the gospel revelation calls us to praise. You know, it transforms our perspective on worship. The world without God, you think about worship, is all about self. It's self-centered. It's about created things. You know, but the gospel changes our perspective. Now, I don't want to worship things. I want to worship God. And it gets, becomes Christ-centered, not on created things, but on the creator. And the last three final points for you guys for this year, uh, before we have this victory night next week. One, I want to thank you all. You inspire me. Um, we had one of these questions. I was sitting in one of the groups, and somebody said, well, these, are, these aren't these, uh, these flattering words I need to watch out for, are they? But I, literally, going around and seeing all hundreds of men seeking God and God's Word every night inspires me. I want to thank you for that. Um, a couple of requests. As we finish this study of Romans, and we know that God's Word transforms us, to challenge us as a body of believers right here. That how are, what are we going to do differently? How are we going to live differently? How are we going to look differently? This is not, this, we didn't spend this year digging into this word just for theoretical knowledge so I can tell you what the book of Romans is about. How are we going to be changed and go out and serve God starting right now? Um, second, invite you all to come back next year. Paul's taught us about how valuable the Old Testament is. Uh, and we, we have, uh, you know, because you come here, nobody's giving you a paycheck, how valuable it is. What friend are you going to bring? And on that point, we have a, a bunch of BSF materials up there. Please feel free to grab what, all, anything that you want. We've got more if that'll help. And also, by the way, this Am I Sure? Steps to Assurance in Christ. If you have any doubts, that's a good one to go to. And if you don't think you know Christ, I would love to talk to you. Um, and last thing, where we started this evening, a praise to God for this whole year. It'll be to come back next week at Victory Night and come tell a bunch of men how God has worked in your life. I appreciate you guys. Let's close in prayer. Father God, we praise you. We praise you as the God who created us, who picked us out before we were born, who loves us, who saves us through your grace and mercy. Lord, we thank you for that mystery that we cannot explain, that you would give each of us a personal relationship. 
you would invest yourself inside of us, in our hearts as our Holy Spirit, Lord, and that you would adopt us into your family and this team. I thank you for these men. I pray blessing over each of them and their family to stay in the word, be guided by you, and be blessed by your love to raise up your team. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a good week, guys. Thank you. Oh, we need to stack the chairs in the back. Yes, thank you. Thank you.